Our next conversation of what's next is from First Distribution. We're going to be talking about the cloud. And Natasha Bezadenot is the Microsoft brand executive at First Distribution. And Natasha, it's great to see you. Welcome to What's Next. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Aki, and very good to meet you again. Likewise, an absolute pleasure. So, I mean, the world has changed. I mean, I don't have to remind you about the impact the cloud is having in our lives. And I think if it wasn't for the cloud, uh, you know, I think navigating around this pandemic for many organizations would be a big challenge. Where are we in South Africa and what is the status of the Microsoft public cloud in South Africa? That's quite interesting. Um, I think, like you said, um, many things are changing. Uh, I think uh, there's, there's good and bad that COVID has brought to us. But one thing that's for certain is that the cloud has taken off. So always uh, good and bad, but for cloud and, and Azure in South Africa, we're seeing triple digit growth. Um, and that is really significant. Um, looking at not only South Africa, but across Pan Africa, um, cloud adoption is significant. Um, do we still need to have conversations around why cloud? I think no. It's more about how fast can you get me there. Um, and that is really good for our partner ecosystem as well. Um, mm. We've seen a, a great value that partners are bringing to customers, having those conversations, and some interesting ways in which we have uh, showed benefit to our ecosystem in how to have those conversations and um, being comfortable in our unpacking the value proposition that Azure brings. So yeah, I think all, all good from our side. Yeah, and it, it's it's amazing when you look at uh, uh, you know the two data centers that Microsoft has. I think that they're not older than two years, if I'm not mistaken, but it's no, something easy. around that uh, point in time. Um, and yeah, and I mean having them on African soil has made a tremendous difference. For businesses, you know, you look at the latency, you look at the speed, you look at, you know, the storage locally, for example. And I mean, it's bringing a lot of opportunities. And I'm sure that um, when you talk about Azure and you talk about hyperscale, uh, there are tremendous opportunities that are being bought from this. Uh, the fact that we've got these data centers in South Africa, but I mean, hyperscale are coming is, is, is massive, isn't it? Absolutely. I think if we look at the adoption from an Azure perspective, in specifically in South Africa, we still see a number of workloads being um, allocated to West Europe, also from a pricing perspective. But definitely the benefits from a compliance perspective that the South African data centers have brought, and just that comfort um, into organizations knowing that the data is not leaving the country, um, is, is a very big benefit. Uh, with the poppy compliance requirements coming in play, um, yes. we are also seeing from an Office 365 and Microsoft 365 perspective, uh, more and more customers asking, but where does my data reside? And luckily for them, it is no longer in, um, in Ireland. It is localized. So those benefits um, are giving uh, the customer, the organization, comfort in the cloud. Um, and also the partner ecosystem, the opportunity to add more value to their customers. So, I mean, you touched on a whole lot of different things. And Azure certainly, um, you know, never mind South Africa, where we've got the data centers globally. You see how organizations are using Azure. Many years ago, being at uh, one of the big Microsoft events and and uh, listening to Satya Nadella talking about Azure then, and the way he was talking about it and describing this future of this cloud platform from Microsoft, you could just see those great things coming. And that was a few years ago, so it's great to see uh, what Azure is delivering right now. But what value can partners add to their customers uh, by using Microsoft Azure as their hyperscale of choice, for example? Good. So um, there's a number of different things that, that the partner is bringing to the customer. I think firstly, we need to look at what type of workloads are customers currently leveraging. Um, in many cases, and what we are seeing from a workload analysis uh, locally is, yes, infrastructure, the virtual machine and the storage is a very mm. big component there, but more so SQL on Azure is becoming a very, very big requirement from a database perspective, um, having those databases locally residing, 
The additional value that the customer can then, or the partner can then add to the customer's life is cost, cost optimization. So from a first distribution perspective, we put a lot of focus into um, very certified skill um, in supporting the partner, having those um, conversations with the customer, analyzing the environment. So if we yeah. for today look at the estate, what does this estate look like today? How can we support the partners with modernizing those estates and um, assessing it from a total cost of ownership perspective? We also, we, I mean, the, the term uh, Azure cost less is, is loosely used, but you need to prove that. And mm. so analyzing optimization, managing your costs more effectively with the likes of cloud health is something that we have Put a, put a lot of focus on. Um, we're most probably the, the, dis, the distributor of choice when it comes to cloud health. Um, and not only from a Azure perspective as a hyperscaler, but if you look at the top five out there, we do four. Um, and, and cloud health is, is facilitating so much more than just um, managing your spend and optimizing your cost. Um, it is very important, especially if we look at the economical circumstances today. Um, the fact that Customers don't actually want to reinvest um, in, in hardware. Um, mm. Not to say that they are not. I think if we look at the data center providers in South Africa, the host of community is still very, very strong. And we are still seeing um, scale from an infrastructure perspective. However, when we look at that SaaS layer, it's definitely converting to cloud. If we look at the way in which we are licensing even service today, everything is now starting to be moved into the CSP model that Microsoft has enabled. Um, mm. And even virtual licensing coming, becoming available next year. So yes. I think if we look at the value that the customer adds, or the, the partner adds to their customer, there's a number of different aspects that they need to, um, boxes that they need to tick. Yes, the cost is always one conversation. But then also, how do we get the data there? What type of tools are we leveraging in order to move, migrate, configure? Um, and that's really how we are enabling that partner ecosystem today um, to show more value in the customer. We also see that, I think, looking at traditional IT, um, it's your relationship with your customer was, yes, the turn, put it down, walk away. If we look at how this role from a partner ecosystem is changing. It's a much more resilient uh, relationship. You need to mm. continuously be in, in, in communication with your customer. You need to continuously look at another way you can add more value. Um, today, you, you do backup. Tomorrow, you start helping them reanalyze the environment and putting more workloads into the cloud. And there's so many ways in which you, the, the, the partner can do that. If we look at the sales plays we have outlined, um, there's 10 sales plays that we have uh, put, it, put in place for our partners to leverage. And these sales plays really help them to articulate the different pain points the customer may have, um, but also a starting point from a cost perspective and what types of resources will be required to be moved into the cloud. If we look at SAP, for example, SAP is very enterprise focused. Yes. Um, but Sage on Azure is something that that more and more customers are very happy to move to. If we look at the CRM payroll and ERP, those critical workloads um, needs to be agile, need to be able to scale very fast. If we look at Black Friday that, that has just come and gone so quickly, mm. Um, the ability for omni-channels and financial transactions to be facilitated through this, uh, the, this capability. And I think also Azure is not an infrastructure conversation anymore. It's more so becoming and adding more value from a DevOps perspective, from the connectors that's available in Azure. So yeah, um, loads, loads of things to talk about and massive opportunity for, for the ecosystem into their customers. Okay, no, very interesting stuff. I mean, uh, you're really making a good case there as the representative Microsoft brand executive at first distribution. And Azure is something that you tell your customers, this is what you should be doing. Um, uh, you know, if I, to, if I to meet you and say, well, you know what, uh, Natasha, give me, give me uh, 10 reasons why I should be moving my workloads and why I should move to the Azure cloud, what would you tell me? 
Well, 10 is going to take us to um, another few days. Um, <laughs> but I think it, there's, there's, there's a couple of very key aspects that I want to highlight. I think security is definitely one of them. Um, yeah. If we look at the security development life cycle, um, it's an industry leading uh, process which has been adopted by, my, by Microsoft and, and very key um, in line with the Azure design. Um, it com com compromises of security at the core for private data. We've just discussed uh, the fact that the, the data centers has been localized from a compliance perspective and the ability to really take your workloads and make sure that the architecture is, is facilitated um, with over 50 uh, compliance offerings within Azure that exist today. So I would say that security is definitely one of the main components where um, if we look at the Gartner quadrants, Microsoft security is absolutely up there. And there's not a lot of hyperscalers that compete with that. Right. Then I think um, scalability and uh, ductability, uh, businesses need to ensure that their systems um, works for them and not the other way around. Um, we know that the resources within the business is they're so dependent on these applications being available um, at all times that they run easy, that they are effective and that they can scale. And going from 10 to 10,000 transactions should not be an uh, underlying infrastructure and should not require additional coding. So I think mm. that is one uh, another thing, the scalability that, that Azure brings is quite an important component. Cost is always going to be important. I think if yep. we look at traditional IT, um, the CapEx requirement, the operational sprawl. So paying for a, a lot of tin that you are only going to necessarily not be using in the next year or two. You're only going to get you that storage platform or, or consistency in year three when you start breaking even. Um, the cost associated with, with ping power and spa uh, space. I mean, are you going to rent space in order to put this piece of tin down somewhere, uh, the power component, plugging it into the power grid, um, and the ping, the networking um, that needs to be facilitated with that hardware as well. Mm, Another mm. very big component. Um, I think when we talk cost efficiency, um, the ability to run an assessment on um, a estate and give a very close to dam cost yeah. estimate um, for total cost of, of ownership. Uh, it is important to also look at Yes, traditional IT and the hardware estate is not always necessarily very modern. It can be very outdated because the applications is not been able to move forward with the infrastructure that it's been sitting on. So I think right. modernization and Kubernetes is going to play very is playing a very big role when we talk Azure um, and also Azure RI. So um, uh, reserved instances where you can lock your cost associated to your virtual machines, also a very, very key component. Um, and then the additional value that the partner can bring the customer with um, cost management and um, optimizing the infrastructure on an ongoing basis, leveraging something like Cloud Elf. Another component is the way in which integrated in uh, the environment into the Microsoft tools. I mean, there's so many tools from a Microsoft perspective. The conversation here is, do you really want to go and invest in various different software resources in order to get the same component facilitated? And the answer is really no when we look at Microsoft and how vast the capabilities across Azure from an AD perspective into yeah. all of the other components from a software layer perspective um, and on the user level, um, how it is impacting. Um, from that perspective, I would say when we look at the way in which Azure is integrated with Dynamics 365, the integration into Power BI, the integration into um, the likes of um, LinkedIn, uh, it, it just makes more sense. Yeah. Um, so there's four, four items for you. Um, do you need more? No, I mean, that, that that's great. I mean, you talk about that integration and it makes perfect sense in what you're saying. And I'm so glad you touched on the security part because I think uh, security is a massive component, uh, especially in the way that we're working today. And, uh, you know, Microsoft's uh, reputation is renowned when it comes to security. 
and uh, how they manage that uh, a across, you know, different machines in the cloud, you name it. Um, some of the myths and mistakes that people make, you know, I mean, uh, when, when they talk about Azure, uh, people say things that aren't always correct. Mm -hmm. Do you want to touch on some of those myths that people come up with and, 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 and be the myth buster today, Natasha? Yeah. Absolutely. So I think um, being a, a large distributor, one of the largest across Africa, we we get to, we are currently seeing a lot of brand to brand interactions. So yes. a lot of people believe that Linux you can't use Linux on Microsoft. So um, the operating system, if it's open source, can't go on Microsoft, and that's obviously not true. Um, yes. I think we look at our alignment with Red Hat, Ubuntu, CentOS, SUSE, um, and then also community-driven solutions like Chef, Puppet, and Docker, um, yeah. there's definitely um, coexistence that's currently happening. If we yes. look at brand-to-brand -brand from a, 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 a backup and, and compliance perspective, the likes of Veeam, um, Azure and Veeam, again, goes hand-in-hand, hand. Office 365 with Veeam backup is, is a thing. Um, and it's something that we are facilitating and we are bringing these brands together. So just Co coexistence of brands is absolutely possible and it's just actually made so much more so much easier with, with Azure. Mm. Um, I think there's also a myth that Azure does not necessarily have uh, the amount of services than, than other hyperscalers. That's absolutely not true. I think in the cloud competition, Azure has to fight harder to fill the gap with other competitors and from an infrastructure uh, as a service battlefield perspective. But right. what we have definitely learned is in the past two years, um, Microsoft Azure has is the most complete, diversified and flexible platform as a service offering in the market. Yes, First Distribution is also the sole distributor for AWS. Um, we are Switzerland. We're not dictating what the customer should use. However, we believe that Azure is the model to go with. Um, then if, if we look at um, the pricing models, um, I think there's this myth that Microsoft uh, overcomplicates pricing. Now, if you're a tech guy and you don't understand the commercial side of things, it's going to always be a little bit of a challenge for you. Mm. But I think from a pricing financial aspect, um, the four most important key things that Azure does bring from a pricing model perspective is the fact that there's no upfront cost. There's no termination fees. There's no, um, you only pay for what you use and it's per minute billing. So when we start looking at the likes of Cloud Health again, um, the ability to switch resources off when you don't use them obviously has cost benefit. Um, yes. And I think just from, from that perspective, um, it's not actually true, it's not complex at all. Um, partners that are aligning with first distribution knows that they get it itemized bill, permanent billing. Um, we make that model as slick and streamlined as possible. Um, some of the other myths, let me think, um, is Azure powerful? Um, I think it's, it's obviously one of the most powerful um, uh, hyperscalers to, to leverage. It is a complete cloud platform um, and it offers competitive and even more richer infrastructure service offerings. Um, I think there's, yeah. I yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that's a, you've given us some very compelling reasons and, and, and busting those myths that you talk about. I can't think of any myself. You've really uh, laid them out pretty straightforward. And, uh, you know, what I'm getting through the, 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 the common thread right across is that, you know, Microsoft Azure brings the flexibility um, to, to, to move to the cloud, you know, a, a great hyperscaler that's got that agility as well from a pricing perspective um, and, and really controlling. Because, I mean, the biggest thing people will tell you is, you know, one of the biggest things is cost, cost, cost. You really make it simple to understand, and uh, thank you for being, uh, thank you for those insightful words, and uh, thank you for explaining it uh, so well, and um, thank you for joining us on what's next. Natasha Bazade, note the Microsoft brand executive at First Distribution, talking to us about Azure and why you should be rethinking your cloud strategy. Look at Azure, and uh, thank you for joining us, Natasha, and explaining the benefits of Azure to us on what's next.
Thank you so much, Aki. It was wonderful Thank to be on your show.